When we look at the uh, what's happening in the Czech Republic or in Slovakia and in, in general in Europe, we see that this kind of crisis the world has had many times before and we've had a normal reaction which is to paralyze and to be uh, scared of the change and therefore uh, and not understanding, not realizing how much opportunity there is also in that. At the same time, the world has been changing to a digital format in more ways than just at organizations because so many of the young people are no longer willing to go to work for large organizations that have times and rules and regulations and restrictions. And uh, it's a time when more companies, more organizations could take the opportunity to shift from a mode uh, that's really a leftover from the General Motors model of the 1920s and 30s and 40s, which became these traditional models we see today, uh, Microsoft or Google or Facebook, we see even the modern companies that very quickly become structured, become uh, organizational uh, paradigms also of limitations, of rules, of concerns, of constraints. And uh, it ends up uh, giving people the feeling that there's not much of a solution except uh, to have giant corporations, which one way or the other, new or old or contemporary or modern, kind of take over markets, try to monopolize the markets wherever they can, try to drive out uh, uh, other companies and create, therefore, working conditions and organizations that are much uh, a shade still of what Alfred Sloan and GM and all these people put together uh, so long ago. And so it's a moment in which destructuring and creating an architecture of companies that, and, and basically organizations of any type, you see it in NGOs, you see it in the church nowadays, you see it in the political scenario, that there's a, 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 a falling back to uh, models which is basically uh, expulsing and leaving outside alienating completely the people that are entering the job market. And the architecture that that is necessary to attract these people and to make good use of that is one that is not based on having headquarters, on having central entities, on having the amount of controls that everyone is looking for, and instead requires a bit of a leap of faith to say that there's control that can be given over uh, if the organizations take advantage of what's out there. And that means uh, not relying so much on your product, on your plant, on your factory, on your offices, but understanding what's behind the company and finding a new way to structure it from an architectural standpoint. And I think that that's clear in the business world. It's clear in the world of education, where schools are running out of the process of the model that's been there for so long of trying to put kids into a 53-minute uh, class. Uh, making them learn things that are a very small part of what you need to know, and then uh, taking them back uh, to a to a process where you just test them on that very little bit of information. You can imagine in Czechoslovakia, if you want to uh, teach something about literature and you want someone to understand a month's worth of Kafka, you'll find that there's very little that they can figure out in that amount of time. So you're obliged to bring it down to two or three things that you then take, you give it out in the form of, I want you to learn the metamorphosis, and this is what happened, and Gregor Sampa woke up one day, and, and you bring it back to a test. Afterwards, you're testing these kids to find out whether they paid attention to the little bit that you taught, and then at a certain point in time, when they're 17, you send them out into the world. They then have to choose a profession at an, at an age which is very difficult to do, and next thing you know, they're in these organizations and in these companies asking you what you want them to do, what their career will be like in five years' time. And when you know that, in fact, the number of companies that survive five or ten years uh, nowadays with the same management, with the same ownership, is a rare thing indeed and become every time rarer. So it's time, I think, to realize that this opportunity is there and it's been there for quite a while, but it's now latent and there's an opportunity to make a much more dramatic change. And, uh, and people are still very fearful of making it, but the opportunity is there. Even to use a bit of a, one of uh, Kafka's parables, which is called the Before the Law, he talks about 
a person who waits and is guarding an entrance and waits and waits and the person is there and uh, has is has the fear of entering and doesn't know what's behind it and is very scared and at the end of that parable the person is dying after years of waiting for entrance and asks uh, what happened and why he realized that he's been there all these years and that no one else came by in those years and uh, the guard then says this door was open only for you and now that you're dying i can close it and uh, in many respects it was it's what happens with opportunities and i think there's a last chance of this cycle of this last century which is still left over now of making some change and trying to design uh, companies or a structure that's no longer based on rules and regulations what time i want you here what's going to say on your visiting card how much i make versus what someone else makes but something that's based on trust and that says that by giving up control and by making this leap of faith you end up with organizations that are much more capable of adapting and sustaining themselves in the age that's coming ahead of you and so i encourage you to start thinking about which ways you could do that with much more courage because this door is open i think for for many of you and uh, if you leave it there long enough it closes on its own so i wish you all very much luck <laughs>